Hello, and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This episode, we're going to be talking about some cool news WizKids posts on their Twitter, as well as answering some listener questions. I'm your sexy ranch hand co host, Calder Ness. This is episode 384. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm going to make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, back some more. Let this happen Wow, wow, wow. Alex for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Click singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is your Dial H for Hero Clicks champion, the Billion Clicks Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, that's right, Calder. I'm here once again, just to let everybody know that, you know what, Nebraska may be a flyover state, but, uh, I, yeah, that's I about it. Voice. Why the, okay, okay. No, um, uh, just in case anybody is new and this is your first episode, this is my normal, natural voice. I uh, am let's, very annoying. This is my normal, natural voice. <laughs> Simeon, what are you doing, boy? <laughs> Why? Why are you talking like this? Who hurt you? You Who sure aren't acting. You? Hey there, Colorado kid. You sure ain't acting like a cowboy of Moo Mesa. What? The Colorado what? kid. No, I get, I get that part. A cow Boo Mesa? No, Excuse the me? cowboys of Moo Mesa. Oh my gosh, I hate you so much. Oh, uh, Simeon, it seems that our podcast is off to a rough start. Okay, we're not, <laughs> we're not doing I that. I definitely don't know what that was. Uh, was that not the best Christopher Walken you had ever heard? Oh, Come okay, on. Christopher Come Walken. On. Clearly. Okay, that, was, that was an okay Clearly. Christopher Walken. I oh, thought you were brilliant. doing William Shatner, and I was like, that is an oh, awful William no, Shatner. That's a really bad William Shatner. Yeah, yeah no, I don't, I, I don't watch... I don't watch that Star Trek garbage. I do. I guess I do know him from those pr- Priceline commercials. Anyways, uh, this is a Hero Clicks podcast, uh, mostly for casual people. But hey, if you're new, world of Hero Clicks, check the link in this podcast description below. We have a new player episode. Uh, it's called New Clicks on the Block. We go over how to find a venue, uh, how to store your Hero Clicks, how to get started, uh, figures to pick up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so check that out if you are a new listener. And uh, yeah, glad to have you. We're going to start every week with what made us happy. Simeon, now, just so everybody knows, we are recording this uh, October 5th. I'm going to let you peek behind the curtain here, see what the Wizard of Oz is doing. Uh, so if there are things that pop up this week, just so you know, we might add something to the end of the podcast or whatever. Uh, but for right now, this is a midweek uh, podcast here. But Simeon, what made you happy this week? Uh, so this week, it's not so much a what made me happy so far, but... Um... Yes, because we are recording early, we are doing that because I'll be actually flying out to Arizona tomorrow. Uh, Nope, that doesn't really matter for you guys. Uh, I'll be flying out to Arizona (laughs) this week. Uh, And uh, yeah, so we're going to do a bunch of like fun stuff. Uh, Everyone there has in-ground pools because apparently like it's an insufferable state if you don't have an in-ground pool. So I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to seeing some family I haven't seen in a while, but also uh, some pets that I used to live with that are <laughs> going to be down there, so that's going to be fun. Yeah, just a lot of like real cool stuff. Uh, the Grand Canyon da- is down there. There's uh, a-, a bunch of stuff down there. Um, a really expensive cereal yeah. at gas stations. Uh, that's something that that's in there. New state tagline. A bunch of stuff is down here somewhere. I mean, I think so. Like, their state bird is, like, a cooked chicken. They're like, Mm -hmm. yes. We couldn't find a bird that hadn't burst into flame from our 112-degree days. So this (sighs) perfectly cooked chicken is our state bird. Uh, But no, last time I was in Arizona was about five years ago. Uh, I drove down to the Grand Canyon. Oh, man. I drove down in like 16 hours 
I think it's about a 16 hour drive. I drove down there, turned around and like drove back in three day span. Um, did not think that through. It was a pretty bad time, but I did stop at a A and W. So, you know, like the A and W is a restaurant, not just like the Rub soda, beer. but yeah, like okay. the A and W restaurant. It is an actual restaurant. We've got one here in Omaha. I don't see them very often though. I stopped at an A and W comboed with a bowling alley comboed with a gas station and in said bowling alley a and w gas station there was a box of cereal for 30 dollars like i kid you not it was the most expensive like okay so you would gotta be like just appearance michael jordan on a wheaties or something right like something like (laughs) no this was like on the shelf normal like captain crunch so you would think like and this this is very off topic, but uh you would think this would be something like um I don't know like off so far off like the beaten trail that it costs way too much money to bring these like luxuries here, but this was like right. a fully actualized town, like I don't know how big the town was, I can't remember the name of it, but it was a fully like functional town actualized they had a bowling alley that's how yeah that's how if much my hometown doesn't have a bowling town. alley it doesn't or does oh, does not have a bowling alley so uh, yeah see and mine, mine did well kind of uh did the not town that i went alley. to school and did okay uh, but yeah feel slightly better. it just it was it was wild well simeon i hope this preemptive happy is better than the last time you did preemptive happy uh, yes uh uh-huh. Because and if, yeah, and then you lost. So I hope that this trip to Arizona it doesn't end up being like the plane crash to Arizona or something. You know, <laughs> I, like, yeah. Or really dark. I Sorry. do hope I Sorry. don't. Die. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was bad. That uh, that, was that bad. would kind of put a uh, a damper a thing. on the whole yeah the yeah. whole weekend. <laughs> um, no, that sounds fun. Arizona's a cool place. I think I've been there. I don't know two or three times, but no. I hope you have a fun trip. I am looking forward to uh Turn back, seeing what all you guys do. How much expensive cereal you buy? How many A and W burgers you eat while playing while bowling? Uh, it should be a good time. Okay, what made me happy this week? Uh, I got to give it to someone who shot the page a message earlier and showed off. Uh, I'll just say the first name, Crow here. Uh, showed off this awesome uh, custom Heroclix figure of Ash from Army of Darkness, like Evil Dead Two looking Ash. And if anybody knows, I'm a huge Army of Darkness, Evil Dead, Evil Dead fan. And I'm just, I love seeing custom figures. I made my own custom Ash. And I just, I really dig it. You know, since he uses uh, the dark Deadpool and like the Deadpool like Prime from the uh, XDP or an XDPS, goodness gracious, at whatever, De- DPX. Deadpool and the X-Force. Yeah. Uh, Deadpool and the X-Force. Um, so like, I, I was really cool. Like, I'm like, yeah, those are good dials for Ash. I, I do really dig them. So yeah, I was just, it was really cool. And he said he also like made a, a cool, like a, um, necronomicon equipment type thing and i think that's like super cool like i love when people do like creative fun hero click stuff like this i think it's the best um so yeah no that definitely made me happy this week yeah for sure um if you guys have been listening if you're uh listened to our podcast before you might have heard a thread dead redemption i think it's been a while since we've done the creative corner ones but uh Yeah, we really like seeing custom dials and custom figures and stuff. And while this isn't necessarily a custom dial, it is a dial that fits Ash, this specific Ash, really well. Um, Yeah. That Deadpool was like, like, it's weird when people find, like, the perfect character and then you're like, oh, yeah. Huh. I don't know why I never put two and two together. Like, Dark Deadpool has a chainsaw on his sculpt. And has like range on his dial, you know, like I, but yeah, uh, that like was really the, cool. Like, the mixed in, you know, everything about this and like Dreadpool too is like really cool. Cause if, if we just say the, the, cha- the, uh, boomstick is a pen blast instead of like energy explosion, there's like a lot of like blades in there. There's some like perplex, which you could call like one liners or some flurry. Like I really do dig both these dials for sure. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the news. Simeon, we we trek back to the dark, dark desolate wasteland that is WizKids' Twitter. Um, <laughs> no, 
Uh, WizKids and their Twitter, they're not the problem. It it may or may not be people on Twitter. Where are the is Green Dragon? Right. Answer me <laughs> this, though, WizKids. Where is Green Dragon? Oh, Actually, that guy hasn't not... popped up in a while, but sadly. It's true. So we get to see two sculpts. Um, we're going to assume, they don't say, but we're going to assume the set 47 set, which is rumored to be Disney+, Plus, because both of these sculpts are Agatha Harkness as a witch and Scarlet Witch as her, or I guess Wanda as her Sokovian fortune teller outfit or <laughs> comic accurate yeah. Scarlet Witch uniform right? Uh, from WandaVision. So... It's pretty dope. Also, whiz kids make sure to say, uh, which witch are you most hyped to play in Hero Clicks? They also then reply to themselves right away, shout out to Qu- Twitter Crop. Uh, okay. All right. I so, so I imagine that's because the thumbnail before you click on the picture, um, Scarlet Witch's face is like cropped out. Is it? Oh, that's the only that. thing that I can think of. Shout yeah, out I guess to it is. Crop. Okay, it's um, saying like, yo, because the, the image is too wa- is too tall and wide. Yeah. It also cuts off the top of like Agatha's broom and stuff. Yeah, okay, sure. That's the that's only a, way I can... what they mean. Oh, yeah, because okay. otherwise it's just a very weird statement, but... Um, that makes sense. Yeah, no, uh, so... This, yeah, uh, as we kind of thought but uh, tentatively thought uh, this absolutely confirms at least uh, WandaVision in like the next, uh, the, well, not the next, the set 47, which that might not be a working title that might legitimately be the title for like legality reasons or like rights to like, you know, naming stuff after, because what else would they call it? They can't really call it Disney plus. They can't Probably really call not. it like, MCU, like you know, there's. So, I don't know uh, if it just believe... stays set forty seven. How do you feel about that? Um, trying to think of like anything in the MCU that they used forty seven for. I think it was like Object forty seven was like a little one shot, right, or something like that. You know, um, and then I thought forty seven or something like that is Project Pegasus, right, in like comics. Yeah, just calling something set 47 is really weird because in these MCU shows, they haven't been like, oh, yeah, 47, that's a, that's a special number. Unless this is genuinely the 47th like Marvel <laughs> set that they're making. Right. If that's the case, that is like a super weird title. Um, I hope they don't continue that. But I mean, what do you call a set if you're not allowed to say like Disney Plus? You call it the WandaVision, Captain America, Winter Soldier, What right. If Loki set, you know? You can't, yeah. There's like... If they're combining everything, which it seems like that's pretty likely, um, yeah. then yeah. But this for sure is from WandaVision for two reasons. Uh, Agatha Harkness in the comics and in most media appears as a much older woman. And this is like dark haired instead of white haired um, Agatha from said like TV show. And then as Calder stated, this is the <laughs> Sokovian fortune teller. Um <laughs> It's a very like homemade costume and it's it is a throwback to like classic Scarlet Witch costume, but it's in fact not the Scarlet Witch like classic costume uh, for like several reasons. So uh, they definitely sculpted it to be the one from the show paying homage rather than the actual older costume, which is fine with me because, yeah, clearly they're going for the TV show. It will be interesting because, you know, again, spoiler warning for talks about this kind of stuff but i don't think this is a huge spoiler at all um in this episode where she appears in this costume she doesn't really do a whole lot of like magic-y kind of like crazy stuff so this dial wouldn't be like the most impressive wanda that they could have this would be like a very light witch kind of wanda of course she's a good witch she's gonna be the light witch um the witch of light (laughs) i have no idea um she Doesn't she like? I think the yeah. only thing she does is oh like black silver. In WandaVision, the Good Witch comes to us in a bubble, just like the Good Witch in Wizard of Oz. Wow. Oh when does she? When gosh. is she in a bubble? Early when? When? Uh, yeah. When she like when she floats around? 
She floats ra- around in a bubble. I don't know. It's not. She's not. Okay. Second there. He almost had me. She does show up to a destroyed house away at the beginning. I guess the destroyed house and the wicked in the was any we're not gonna do this. Uh I think seeing Wanda in her Halloween outfit, uh my opinion confirms a shifting focus Wanda. I really want it to be that way, I guess. Just because that's what me and you had like kind of devised we would think would happen with WandaVision, because we see them change so much between ep- well, maybe not change crazily between episodes, but like still, you know, like they have several different like looks you can there's enough with. differences yeah um power and like behavior wise they're probably like somewhat static at least besides like the larger changes but yeah uh i could definitely see them doing especially like agatha and maybe not like shifting focus but definitely some sort of secret identity kind of mechanic yeah oh secret <laughs> identity would probably yeah. That'd probably be my go-to way to explain the kind of things they do. Yeah, that would be cool. You know, if we got... Yeah, I don't know, but seeing, like, this version of Agatha and knowing that we have a different version and then also we can have a Agnes version makes me feel like Agatha might also have shifting focus, too. Honestly. Um, because... Because, like, why would we get Young Witch? This could be Young Witch or this could be Halloween Witch, I guess. I'll say for the sake of keeping them the same, they're both from the Halloween episode, even though she never strikes a pose like this in the Halloween episode. Right. Um, but yeah, we could potentially get a shifting focus Agatha Harkness as well, which could be cool. Um, or maybe it's just a bunch of single versions of that character that are all different and do their own things. Don't have to be shifting focus. Not everything has to be shifting focus. Sorry. Um, but it certainly feels like it would make sense. Um, but yeah, no, that's cool. I, I'm digging seeing these sculpts. I personally believe uh, that's not really a Catherine Hahn looking face or whatever her name is. That is Elizabeth Olsen. Like, straight up, that's Elizabeth Olsen. Now, is it going to look like that on the miniature? Of course not. It's a digital render. They never look one to one. Right. Um, but, no. Yeah, like, that's uh, Elizabeth Olsen right yeah, there. Yeah, the reason, the reason why I say close. it is explicitly from the show is because. Um, her cape is tied with like strings, which was something that was done in the show, but that's not like a part of classic Scarlet Witch garb. So it's to me, it's pretty clear that like, that's what they're paying. They're at least paying homage to the show uh, with this sculpt because that's a detail they could have easily just done away with um, at least as far as the rendering goes. Yeah. Yeah. In, I will agree with that. I have nothing else to say. You're right. Like they they wouldn't have done any of that stuff unless it was the actual like TV show version. Um, kind of generic sounds of uh cement chunk they're standing on sidewalk or whatever. That's right. fine. Doesn't Placeholder matter. digital rendering. I yeah. I don't know. They might. I mean, that might be what they end up on. Who knows? It doesn't. It doesn't really matter like no. that much, you know. So yeah, I'm excited for it though. I'm really I. We'll say one thing though. Um, WizKids is definitely building hype around like using what if and like using this stuff because it's more fresh in people's minds you know, before February of next year, where we've been over a year since WandaVision. But, uh, I don't, I'm starting to get hyped for uh, the Disney Plus set, set 47, and I'm starting to like not be as hyped for like Forgetting War about of the Empire. Realm and Empire. Yeah, Empire. Like, yeah, we're so hyped for Empire, but now I'm like, I'm honestly, I'm so much more thinking of like, okay, I gotta save at least this much Hero Clicks budget for this, and I'm like completely forgetting about Empire because they haven't showed me anything I care about from Empire yet. You no, know? nothing I really, really need from Empire, anyways. But now they're showing me sculpts, and I don't necessarily need these guys either. But it's just, it's getting me excited for potential Falcon Winter Soldier stuff like is getting me I am all aboard the hype train for set 47 like like ah oh, I am I'm there for it man but I don't want to forget about like Empire and everything like at the same time you know because Empire looks like an awesome set it really does so I want them to and I get it because what if it's still going on and what if stuff is going to be in the set so it makes sense them like posting every Wednesday ever and whatever when they see what if stuff but it's like yo can we please get some info about Empire, please? Because that is like that is the next set. I'm never gonna like dog on anybody for posting new info 
like for any reason at all i want to see more info about anything and everything but uh i don't want to lose my hype for empire like that's all it is like that's what it boils down to um also we didn't say this last episode but uh it's it's october so september's over so uh i'm glad you guys finally woke up (sighs) I shouldn't I shouldn't even done that was so bad. Jeez. Uh but no, uh, I, what I meant to say refer- Oh my god. Yeah, was. What, what I meant to Ooh. say was uh <laughs> are totally in the clear. WWE Wave 2 did not come out in September like it yeah. was quote unquote supposed to. Yeah, so slated. Now we're just living in the now, ladies and gentlemen. Ah-ah. It's wacky and wavy and crazy here in the uh the apocalypse where WWE Feels like Wave 2 never came out. Um no, I'm I'm still super stoked for Empire. I think after reading the reading some of like Empire, I'm slightly less stoked. I oh. think the biggest thing for me is Kree are going to be back. Scrolls are going to be back. Um, we've got a bunch of cosmic stuff. We've got X Men mixed with Avengers mixed with Fantastic Four. So it's cool. All yeah. the properties can be in one set again. That alone is like really cool. The fact that Marvel had to have like several sets a year to get you like one of every property and DC could just do their one. That's clearly why they only get one is because they're like, well, we can just do everything. Um, And then War of the Realms, I haven't started yet, but the few sculpts that we've seen are pretty cool. Um, I don't know how much of that set I'll be interested in, but if it's anything like the Mighty Thor, the Mighty Thor like really blew me out of the water with like how cool it was. Um, I regret getting as many of the stone men of Saturn as I did because they never actually ended up working nearly as good as I oh. wanted them to. It's very sad, Simeon. Uh, I think we can all agree that one should have invested heavily in stone men of Saturn. Anyways, that is, that is Twitter. I think we talked, we've, we've beaten the, the two sc- <laughs> when it's a light news week, guys, you just sort of beat to death what you see. So, we apologize. Let's go ahead and move on into uh, community here. There are dozens of us. Dozens! I mean, we got some questions for the show. We asked them to send us questions. If you want to be in the know and to send us questions for like random episodes like this, and also play Bad Samaritan with us every time we do record an episode, and also get awesome action tokens and posters and t-shirts and dice and all sorts of cool stuff, then guess what, buddy? Go ahead and support us on patreon.com slash dial H for hero clicks or just go to Patreon and search dial H for hero clicks. We'll be there. We'll pop up for as little as one dollar a all month. All the bloopers are. Uh, yeah, all the bloopers. The, like, the, the bloopers, ones that have been released. Um, special uh, look and advanced looking at uh, videos. videos and stuff. Yeah. I mean, sometimes some of the videos that go up in Discord Exclusive. don't go. Yeah, they don't go live yeah. ever. Um, so exclusive yeah, behind the scenes videos and bloopers there actually is a lot more in there than it really is I mean we've yeah. kind of got like our own little bubble similar to the witch from Wizard of Oz don't no we're uh, not gonna go back to that <laughs> no, um, no we yeah. kind of yeah we literally <laughs> we we're making like our own little uh world in here and sometimes when I go back to like the normal non-discord world of like Facebook I forget not everyone's like in well, on the jokes and stuff, and it's I don't know who Donnie it's Pepper hard. Cricket is. Yeah, I'm like, man, where's all the Donnie Pepper Cricket references? Uh, where's all the uh, I don't know, the ranch yeah. hand uh, laugh tracks? Right, exactly, exactly. So yeah, if you want to uh, go to our Patreon, also we do giveaways every single month. This last month, I gave away a Cosmic Ghost Rider. What am I going to jump in? An Ultimate Warrior. Wow. All right, questions though. Bill says, when was your favorite time to play Hero Clicks competitively, casually? Why? Is it right now? Is it sometime in the past? That's a good question, Bill. Simeon, when was your, let's just do your competitive, my competitive, your casual, my casual. When was your favorite time to play Hero Clicks competitively? Okay, so favorite time to play competitively had to have been when I was like new and I was new to competitive at least uh when i was like starting i was just like trying out some different stuff and i was like "Ooh, this can shut down this so i was like trying like the rock paper scissors thing um sadly it was like an id card heavy time so a lot of like my team builds didn't work but it was it was just really interesting trying to like push myself 
to take this game that I had always taken with like a grain of salt, real casual kind of way, and try and like push it to its limit in my own mind. And of course, like I've never been on a team, I've never been on like a group chat where we discuss like the ins and outs of stuff. So it's always just been me in my own brain on like a website looking at dials trying to figure out what can be like the best. And when I was naive enough to think that, you know, like lockdown teams would be like good, like uh double green lantern, uh, Ameridroid devil dino. Like when I ran that team, that was probably like the most fun I had in competitive because I had not yet come to the realization that like, ah, hero clicks boils down to about, 20 to like maybe if you're pushing it 30 competitive pieces and then all teams are like a variation of those plus like some sort of sideline element um and that's like a real i don't know that's a real downer way to think of competitive but man every time i try and build now if i try and build a truly competitive team it ends up looking like some sort of variation of a team that someone else is already running um or it ends up being like a better version than you know multiple people in a team say like called like sanic pests made uh because my magneto swap is better than theirs but you know it's okay to be worse than me even if you're on a team (coughs) and lucas doesn't listen to this so what's he gonna do what's he gonna literally that's anything we want about lucas (laughs) It's true. It could be any Lucas, guys, okay? It doesn't have to be yeah. that one that you're yeah. thinking of right now. It could be anyone. There's tons of Lucases, and several of them drive vans. Who knows which one it could be? At, at least one of them's from Holland, all right? <laughs> so, like, for sure, guys. Okay. Um. Oh, you're basically saying, like, when you just started. When yeah, did you so just start? When did you just start? Give, give me, like, a set, you yeah, know? Yeah, uh, once again, like... uh. This would have been 2017 when the 2017 rules dropped and Thor came out. The Mighty Thor came out. Uh, Not specifically because that set. I don't think I actually played anything from that set. But Unimind got real big real fast. And ID cards were real big. And I just really liked playing with like counters to those kind of things. And then when I played against teams that weren't those things, I usually lost. But when I played against like those specifically or things similar, um, I could hold my own and it was kind of fun. But yeah, since then I've, you know, gotten kind of like uh, disillusioned with the whole competitive aspect of this game. I understand. I understand. Uh, sadly, I think two of the like, I will say my favorite time. Playing. I don't want to say it was when I just started because I made some really weird teams that were like obviously bad. Um, but I part of me wants to like say the time that I first won a states. I don't know if I necessarily even liked that time, but I think if I choose any time other than when I just started playing competitively, it's gonna have Unimind in it, which is just an instant bummer uh, for all the reasons that Unimind is just so lame to play against. And if you played them, you're lame. Sorry, bro. Or ma'am, Briston. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Lucas say told it. me to hide in hindering and pick stealth every turn. I'm gonna perplex up my defense, and it's your go. No, thank yep. you. I do not wish to repeat these <laughs> these days. Uh, uh, that but, was perfect, so I, Tristan. That's exactly what Tristan though. sounds like. Yeah, that's, if you, if I could have seen yeah. your dyed blue hair, his voice is so deep. On. It's just beautiful. Yeah, hey, Colder. I think I will sit in stealth and pick let's not stealth. let's not make fun of all my local players, please. <laughs> they're pretty. They're all pretty nice people who I actually enjoy hanging Except out with. Jonah, um, um, yeah, no, Jonah yeah. sucks. <laughs> no, the, <laughs> no, the Unimind too. time was gracious. interesting because it was like you had to, you didn't like almost everyone didn't want to play Unimind, but you had to be prepared to play against Unimind. Um, and yeah, it was just. I don't know. It was the best of times and also the worst of times because if you could pull out that win against Unimind, it was like, yeah. Slow down there, Charles Dickens. (laughs) I beat a Unimind with like this and that and blah, blah, blah. Um, And that was always cool. Another one of my favorite times was when States went popper 
that was like one of like the most sure. refreshing ways to do 300 that we've had in a while at like quote unquote high competitive. Um, we'll say, yeah. I don't know about my favorite like time overall. We'll say my favorite competitive hero clicks tournament that I'd ever been to was the uh, Indianapolis tournament last year. Um, the, the one that the national guard held. Um, I actually really enjoyed it. I played teams that I enjoyed and liked, and then I just had a fun time. So like for Popper, I played like an almost all Captain America team besides Happy Hogan and a name red. And that actually made top eight in the Popper event. And I was really happy with that. And then um, sealed. I won sealed with one booster of Spider-Man and one booster of uh, XDPS. So, like that was fun. Um, I do kind of like mix sealed like that sometimes, you know, it's, it can be fun like that. So it was pretty cool. Then for modern, I also made top eight and I was playing super scrolls. I was playing super scrolls, Captain Marvel, Josiah X, some Spider-Man people, um, whatever, what's his face? 1776, you know, oh before gosh. he got bad. I know saying that you like, I enjoyed playing him, but I did though. I did enjoy playing 1776. You know what, like a lot yeah, of people I rag did. on it, but I actually liked 1776 pre nerf. It cut out a lot of the stuff that I hate playing against. And a lot of the teams that I played, like did not get as burnt out or like didn't get as the, uh, I guess like trounced by him. Um, the one time we did, I can't remember who I played against 1776. When they finally got within that like six range and shut off my leadership, I was That's like, beautiful. oh, this is bad. Like, Two then actions. I was down to two actions. No. But I think if like I had actually ever practiced against one, I would have known not to like make that mistake or it would have been like fine. Because that was when I was rocking the Fantastic Four build, which, yeah, like 1776 is great, still does not like put a dent in my fantastic four build when I've got, you know, everyone's got shape change. Everyone's got like a 19 defense, you know, just like ridiculous stuff. And you've got a casual because of black leopard. Yes. And then casually is your favorite time to play casually. Simeon. Uh, my favorite time to play casually might've been like, <laughs> I don't want to say when I very first started, because that's actually not true. That was, I played in a fairly, uh, and this is like small town competitive. I played in a fairly competitive like environment when I first started, and it's stuff that like looking back on now probably never would have won a like states or anything that I've been to like that. But at my local venue was like it was rough. It was like killer stuff. Um, no, I will say when I first got to Omaha and first like started playing with all the people in like Omaha here. And that's, you know, I started hitting like the three different venues that we had. That was probably like the best time from, so that would have been like 20 late 2016, uh, around like the drop of, uh, Avengers defenders war to like 2020 when we really got like a shakeup on like who was actually going to like venues and stuff. Um, that was probably, yeah, that was, like, a real good, solid time. There was times, you know, clearly it's not always going to be, like, the best of time when you, depending on, like, sets and depending on what people play and, like, just, you know, what's going on. But, no, like, I I think casually that's, like, the best it's ever been was here in Omaha. Um, we just got, like, a really good, solid set of uh, players. Uh, shout out to Ray who I used to really like playing against because he always made shape change and super sense rolls. And he decided not to play anymore because turns out when you can't play for a year, sometimes you reevaluate things. It'd certainly be like that sometime. No, I'm going to have to, my answer is very similar to yours, Simeon. Uh, when I first moved closer to the uh, Sioux Falls area, still about an hour or so away, uh, but that was like the closest I've ever had a venue. And so I would, I really enjoyed driving down every week and playing with everybody. That was super fun. So, yeah, definitely. And in, that included in that, uh, throughout 2020, when we started doing Thursday throwdowns, Thursday throwdowns, like even though it was just like once a week, one game, and uh, we were mostly doing it to like make content for people and stuff like that, it was truly like that was 
some of like the most fun hero clicks I've played. Uh, without you know, with the exception of it being on like roll twenty, sometimes. Uh, yeah, that was probably like the worst part about it. But no, like looking at those older dials and like seeing like you know, like I didn't have to team build really because it was people were voting for stuff, and I was just like, ah, okay, well this is what I got. Uh, it's all it that looks pressure like off trash. Of you. So yeah. Oh, sure. yeah, there's no no pressure to win because it's like you people did this to me. So now you get to see why Teen Titans is the worst set in Hero Clicks. And then I lost twice in a row because uh we failed to record the first time. Um you had to play Teen Titans twice. Oof. Why? So you made Simeon play Teen Titans twice against the set that he actually <laughs> liked. Yeah, Eight, one of my like, favorite sets that has ever been made had to beat me with it twice. Ugh, man. At the very least, the second time, the one that the audience saw, I didn't heal uh, Surface. Jubilee. Jubilee all yeah, the way. Yeah, that's true. Actually failed to heal her anything the second time. She hit nothing, uh, which is probably how 90% of those games should have went. That's true, yeah. For anyone playing Vampire Jubilee. Uh, but all right. Uh, yeah, right on. Uh, next up, we have Alex. He says, to tie into Bill's question, if you could pick one mechanic to bring back from Heroclix's past into the current game, what would it be? I would have to say duo attack, but make it better. Yeah, I want split and merge back. I want duo attack back. I love duo figures. They were a huge highlight for me when I played the game. That would be the one mechanic I would absolutely bring back. Yeah, I I think it's I think it can be done with special powers. Like Eddie's got like three amigos. Like there's people that could do like multiple attack kind of things, and that could be shown on special powers. But I think if because I think people like duo figures. Uh, I think if it was an actual like ability or an actual um, optional like symbol on the dial. Uh, whiz kids wouldn't necessarily be forced to make more but it would be like encouraged or it would at least be like here's our go-to like rule for this kind of thing and that'd be cool uh something that i used to like um i i I don't want to piggyback off of that answer but uh i'd like to see more resources not necessarily like in the same vein of galactus but like Punisher van was cool. It doesn't have to like be good. It doesn't have to be like the Blackbird from uh, X Men or anything like that. But just a uh, some sort of like resource that does something interesting. As long as it's cool and it adds to teams. Because right now it's I don't know. It's like it's a whole lot of weird kind of like meta going on right now. And I always liked how a new resource could shake that kind of stuff up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A little resource action. Okay. All right. Luke 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 says, We all know that the promise of top prizing often drives people to fall back on specific meta builds. Uh, even when event organizers try to shake things up and keep it fun or casual, we still p- see people falling into certain archetypes. Deck teams, expensive figures, whatever. Uh, he also said, How much does Super Rare Flash cost now? Simeon, you want to pop a quick eBay search? Give a give a um, give a my weekly quick check. Is 90, uh, I'll yeah, look 90 up the, right. what it's sold for. Um, he says, if you had no restraints on acquiring prizing, how would you restructure a tournament build and reward system to allow for truly unique teams, pieces, and play styles to see play? The system of taking first, second, and third need to be demolished and rebuilt. I think for a casual setting, if we're saying it's not 300 modern, whatever, build your best team, see who's, you know, the best player with the best team building skill, with the best uh, dice rolls, good luck, you know, um, then, yeah, nothing needs to change for that. If you just want people to play the same whatever stuff every time, that's fine. I would say in order to change uh, a casual way, it should not be focused on how well you do in a tournament. So... That was my one problem with the Hero Clicks for Huntington's casual day. And of course, that was an awesome event. Loved that it happened. It's still giving like the top prize to the person that just won, that just built the best team. I think kills the idea of a of a casual day, honestly. Um, it's not about being the best, it's about yeah. having fun. So I think people that maybe built the most comic accurate 
or thematic team that delved into the family aspect of things, you know, like people that like built a team that actually had like family members on it, you know, people who were actually related should have gotten rewarded for that. Um, or even played an entire family, like if they played the full Inhumans family. I don't know if you need yeah. to get but like, I, whatever. So they did it, do um, that. like the family, like what was it, Fellowship or whatever. No, um, they did. I know the they did. I'm that talking about one for not probably <laughs> had like the least out of like the the teams that got some sort of fellowship. I don't remember the one of the fellowships was like worst luck. So nixing that one, I don't want, know what was on that team. Out of the teams that were in like fellowship or like runner up or whatever, the team that actually won, to my recollection, was like Mirror Beverly and Wesley Crusher. And I was like, I don't even know if Wesley exists in the mirror universe and so that was like one of the problems i had was there they didn't have a solid criteria if like you could mix universes if it could be this like you know whatever oh, if they had names that match the whole or thing though simian they said you weren't allowed to mix universes they said you weren't allowed to they say did, Earth X, but then Spider-Man. they clearly let people do it yeah because then yeah, yeah there's it, like a another team was that got like so another team they that like i remember them saying like was hard to not pick was MCU Odin, which is actually Loki, and then Loki, and then Thor. And then the other thing they said was like they had to be blood related. At least at first they you know they said like they had to be actual like siblings or parental or like whatever. Um Loki and Thor aren't actually like related in that capacity. Yeah. So uh it was just double Loki Thor and then like Surtur who absolutely does not have any connection to either of them so that one was just like in my opinion I was like well if like anyone was actually paying attention to a cross universe or b that Odin is actually Loki disguised as Odin and not actually Odin it would be pretty simple to be like oh yeah that's you know whatever but uh apparently they don't if you don't play casually often you don't notice things like real name loki on the 25 point odin uh i don't want to rag this so that was a while ago i don't want to rag on too many teams but yeah um yeah basically what i'm trying to say is (laughs) i I think shouldn't have been like a first place prize at all it should have been like purely who can build the most thematic family whatever team right right which technically doesn't take the most skill you but if you were to do like a creative one, so like the team I would have built would have been a little more like out of the box, I guess. It would have been like Captain America, Peggy Carter, Sharon Carter, you know, like maybe like not the, as obvious of a family. It's just like the Fantastic Four or like whatever, you know. Um, it's so like something like that. Or even if you played like Charlotte Flair and Ric Flair, you know, like that would be more interesting. And then some other WWE stuff, right? But like that would have been really interesting as opposed to just being like, oh, uh, they're the Inhumans, you know. So I think that would have been really cool. Or if you had mark everybody mark down who they had the most fun like playing against, which they've done this at plenty of tournaments, plenty. Yeah. Of, they did this at the Quicks Cup, did this at all sorts of places. This is what we used to do um, at the venue in Rapid City that I used to go to. She had the most fun playing against tonight. All right, boom, they win fellowship. I think that should have also been it. You know, I think this should not have been a skill based like tournament at all. It should have just been like literally stuff that's bad because me whenever i play casual I play stuff that i know is bad but i want to play it because it's fun because i don't care about winning winning does not mean i have more or less fun in a casual or even even sometimes a competitive setting like that does not matter me having fun does not mean i have to win right last week we were doing 400 silver age no character over 125 points i played the wrecking crew from the mighty thor they're not good play 25 points under at 400 points they're not they're not a good team they, they fit the criteria no one's over 150 or 125 or whatever right records like at 125 i had to put in five freaking well, i didn't even have five i had to put in four friends of humanity just to round out a brute theme team like i'm just playing wrecking crew because it's fun to play the wrecking crew i know they're bad 75 points for five clicks is, is bad they're bad no one has a higher than an 11 attack and it's just the wrecker it's bad it's a bad team i went in knowing it was a bad team and i still had fun regardless of that you know? so some people can't bring themselves to play an inherently bad team which is weird i don't know well, why they yeah, can't because that that falls on like some people just hate losing 
And if you stop thinking about it as losing and like lose or win, because in the casual setting, when nothing's on the line and it really doesn't matter, if you stop thinking about it as like I'm losing and more think about it like how it's how the interaction is going with the person you're sitting across the table with. How can I have fun today, yeah. tonight, whatever? Yeah, because that that like mindset can drastically change how you build sometimes. Um, and yeah, like I played. Uh, I played a Krakoan revival team with a bunch of Jamie Madrixes who spits out like dupes and uh, versions of himself and like different stuff like that. Knowing full well my opponent was going to be able to get Krakoan revival bystanders and a ton of points from all like the dupes I was creating and stuff, knowing full well I was probably not going to win any of those matches. I just thought it'd be fun to like see my opponent like realize like, oh, I cannot defeat this team in, like, the classical way of, like, KOing all the figures. Um, Right. And so, yeah, it's, you know, it's different stuff like that. It's not, like... And I had fun trying to win with that team, even though, like, I knew I was at, like, a handicap because there was no way I was going to be able to, like, cross the map and attack stuff. But uh, speaking of which, crossing the map and attacking stuff... uh, the Super Flash is averaging, last four sold on eBay is averaging 80. Uh, now, of course, most people say go by the sold value, but at the same time, if nobody is offering it at 80 on eBay, then what is like the true price? Because right now, uh, I think most of the offers are 100 plus. And so, yeah, if you, if you can't find it for that averaged of 80 price line, then it's uh, quite possible that you're going to have to pay like the 90 to 100 that it's sitting at. Um, did you, did you feel like you answered Luke's question? Sorry, see man, I sort of got off on a tangent there. Uh, so yeah, I, the whole, uh, system of first, second, no, third, um, how do we just to, change that or, yeah. Uh, yeah. You brought up, uh, hero clicks for Huntington's like the casual night event. Um, and I think that's a great way to talk about it because, yeah, when you take prizing into account, um, any kind of actual prizing, which there was some really good prizing in that event, some amazing prizing in that event. And so clearly you're going to get some competitive builds that try and slip through the cracks to win. Uh, like Calder said, taking out like the first place, second place, that kind of thing, and making it only, because it's casual, like it's meant to be casual, um, and you they did have a 300 modern event as well where people could bring whatever kind of stuff they wanted to. So yeah, if they like fully took that out and just invested that one additional like couple prizing tiers to fellowship, you know, maybe like first place gets like a random LE. Like, you know, congrats, here's like your little extra whatever. Um, but yeah, if they dedicated it a little bit more to fellowship and then again, um, I think that it should have been some sort of either vote based kind of thing, or I don't know. I didn't really care for the way that it was, it was like voted on by the tournament organizers who clearly, you know, whether you like it or not, um, people are going to have their own like prejudices and their own like personal feelings towards people that they've been playing with for the better part of like 20 years in some cases. So there's no way you can be unbiased in that kind of situation when you're, like, voting for certain people. Um, If there's, like, a better way to do it than just having, like, you know, the panel of judges do it. And then, yeah, that was, uh, I think that's just, like, switching it all over to, like, some sort of fellowship. You know, make some, like, fun, wacky kind of stuff. They did have, like, first person to, like, crit miss or crit hit or whatever that kind of of thing that was going on. Uh, But yeah, if you do, you know, maybe like most out of the box, like, you know, have like the everyone vote for who they played against. That was like the most out of the box kind of theme. If you're going to try and push for a strictly casual kind of setting, prizing cannot be going to first because, yeah, any monetary value added to first place is going to give people the incentive to build really crazy competitively. Sure. Uh, all right. Uh, Cody asks a bit of a fun question here. How does elevation work? Why is every answer always wrong? It's real <laughs> complicated, man. Elevation. Only play flyers. Think... That's the yeah. thing. You only it's ever true. play flyers. 
Just play uh, flyer. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 baby Groot figure lets you ignore it when you're next to him. So play flyers or put that guy on your team every single time. Every single time. And then when it comes to line of fire, just don't. You see my figure? What are you, what are you, what are you trying to shoot him? Uh, you can't because uh, elevated plus blocking plus something means no, no, no. Oh, this patch of trees? Yeah, you can see over that. My friend over there behind a rock? No, no, that yeah. rock's really tall. <laughs> you can't see over that. Not going to happen. Not going to happen, bruh. Yeah, bro. Ele- elevated is elevated. What can I say? It's different at every venue I go to. Uh, no. All right. Uh, El Presidente Chance here says, how does hovering and soaring uh, mechanic work? Uh, so when you're on the little flight stand, we have a flyer. They have this little plastic. So many people are not going to know this. First of all, uh, in Golden Age, if you've ever bought a Golden Age figure, if they can fly, they have the flight symbol. They normally have this little plastic standy deal and then their sculpt connects to that on it they have this little thing that clicks up and down uh that can tell whether or not they are hovering or soaring i think when it's up they are soaring and they can't be punched by a close attack i it's, i believe i think it's like yeah it's, if <laughs> yeah like i, I don't want to even bother so... with like this rule but i believe it's like you have to have movement speed like movement speed becomes half to go Ooh. to transition from hovering to soaring or something like that. And then on top of that, it, yeah, it gives you like some sort of bonus against range. And then, yeah, close combat, it just does not work against you unless they are also hovering or soaring or I have no idea. I think close combat, you actually literally have to tell your opponent it sucks to suck. And then, and then you continue. <laughs> what's uh, what's all right. bad is... It seems like a really cool mechanic. It seems like uh, my flyer should be able to just, like, fly up out of, like, Wolverine's arm's reach, right? right. Yeah. But no, like, that. you know, that's why we've got elevation. You can just fly up elevation. Um, How does elevation work? I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't. Uh, Josh asks, if you could pick a character to be made into a sideboarding figure, like the Invisible Woman... Uh, or Professor X and Magneto from Rise and Fall. What character would you pick? What keywords would they swap out? And how many figures could they swap? So I'm going to say really quick, Josh, I hate swap figures. I hate all of them. Uh, <laughs> I hate Professor X and Magneto. I hate what they have turned modern into currently. That is why this version of modern is probably my least favorite version of modern since I've been playing. I really hate swap. Um, however, make swap not unbearable i think it needs to be not so much those figures but more so swap like uh the wizard who does frightful for aka swap with a bad keyword so it's bad not meta. swap yeah um so i personally think this is not a bad keyword but it's not going to be a competitive keyword and that is wwe i would love to see um, some kind of manager person, and it can simply be called drafted to SmackDown or Raw, just because the draft is happening right now. So it's top, it's topical. Okay, right. well, not in a week from now when you hear this, but it's topical now. Um, You're so, fired. That's what. Yeah, if we, if we get a Vince McMahon who can do out. this little swap thing, he can swap people out, like a drafted to SmackDown or Raw or something like that. General managers. Uh, basically for either brand i some bald guy is the downer raw per i don't even remember i haven't watched it in a second here anyways uh, but yeah i think wwe is a fairly harmless keyword for swap so like 70 points who do you swap in with 70 points you know it's gonna be eddie guerrero or i guess Dan kind or finn pallor from the starters or something you know like straight up swaps like ultimate warrior he's 100 points so you swap him you know with like show man undertaker stuff like that there's a lot of 80 point guys you know etc there are some wwe figures like ronda who's you know just the worst uh she has a 95 point i don't don't think anybody's 95 points so she has to be swapped with a 100 point character 45 point line can be used for like Triple H, Ric Flair, 45. I think AJ Styles and Sasha Banks also share 70 and 40 point lines. So, yeah, I think WWE as a swap mechanic would be fine, would be tolerable, and it wouldn't be broken and disgusting like Professor X and Magneto. (laughs) 
Uh, Simeon, who would you choose? Uh, so swap mechanic. Yeah, I like the I like the uh, not traditional like powerhouse kind of keyword idea. I was originally going to say just like you know from my comic book knowledge, uh, Batman build, building like the Justice League. Uh, he would be like an obvious contender to put like on that. But to go along with that, um, you could do like Teen Titans, Justice League Dark. Uh, clearly, they don't like those both don't get a ton of love, but that would be a, a huge option. And then, um, yeah, like WWE is like probably the only indie property that it even makes sense to really swap things back and forth. But if we got some like generic keyword kind of swap people, um, or I don't know if we got like a legacy card for say like a 150 point character named Doug, and then he could make any character with his keywords. I hate also you. Also have the Doug's army keyword. Every second of this conversation that has started five hey, seconds Calder, ago. welcome to Doug's army. Oh, Oh, I hate Do you that get it? So much. Because this character is now part of Doug's army because they have a keyword that they share with him. I'd really love a legacy oh, card gosh, for I that. Hate it so much. Just because HC Realms never I don't think HC Realms has ever been better than when Doug's there? army comments were like flooding every figure. Oh, this character has the brute keyword. Welcome to Doug's army. This character's a warrior. Welcome to Doug's army. Just beautiful. Oh beautiful. Cause me this Although if HC Realms dies, you know, that's... We have other options, people. Right. Uh, so I won't be super upset if that's the other case. But no, uh, as far as Josh goes with sideboarding figures, I think that if DC was to do it, I think Batman makes the most sense. And Justice League... Honestly, Justice League doesn't seem too overpowered in the grand scheme of things. Like, Micron, Adam are probably going to start on your team regardless. There's not a lot of figures that it really makes like sense to swap out. I swap out Superman and all my 10 points. I guess it's 10 points Superman at TCF Justice League. Could you swap him out with Fates I don't for know. whatever reason you want? Ooh, that would be really fun. Stupid, you know? I don't know if you're allowed to put Fates on that, like... 10 point line unless uh i don't know that would be a really interesting ruling um but no like more so things like uh who's like a figure generator like a bystander generator because that's also part of part of like side the sideline swap teams is you can get free equipments and free bystanders yeah that way yeah so like that was a big thing with uh, it never made sense to me to swap out the super rare thing in my Fantastic Four yeah, builds. Here would, he would be a good one, right? Um, for like by standard generation slash like objects, but you'd make like a uh, Sinister Syndicate, Sinister Six, make that a swap out, right? And then you get uh, Goblin Glider, you get oh, the Venom Symbiote, the Carnage Symbiote, symbiote the um, Beetle the Pod Fusion Generator, the Beetle Pod, right? So if Sinister Syndicate was like swap out, it could be Norman Osborn or Dr. Ock or whoever was in charge at whatever time, be like trying to put together the perfect, you know, Sinister Syndicate or whatever you yeah, want to call that's it. That's another team that, um, yeah, does, that would has be solid. swapped quite a bit. It, um, a Norman Osborn with like a, again, a keyword we don't have really anymore, but like the Dark Avengers. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, like with WizKids' new line of thinking with like lower point figures easier to make 300 point teams that kind of stuff if we ever get new versions of characters um you know what does does Dakin have the Avengers, Avengers team? no I feel like it's does. gotta just be I don't think he has Avengers right they probably don't even have that keyword anymore when's the last time oh. they did uh let's see okay uh, uh 2019 Spider-Man. Bullseye and I Apeic which were part of the LE set no, Dakin does have uh, Dark oh. Avengers. Yeah, look it, at that. Does this Iron Patriot have it from Spider-Man? Iron Patriot does have it. Okay, not so a dead Green keyword. Goblin. Hey, yeah. So, pardon yeah, me. It's not a, somehow not a dead keyword. Um, even Moonstone from 
ABPI. In America? Wow. Oh, okay. Look at that. They really right, did. You, uh, they I'm really playing remembered. a Dark Avengers team team next week. Let's yeah. go. You even can do normal Norman Osborn. Um, wow. Norman That's Osborne actually, yeah, so that is kind of cool. But, yeah, something like that where, you know, these teams or like Wilson Fisk who can. Oh, yeah, know, that too. Put together like Magia, or I don't know if Wilson was he wasn't really in charge of the Magia, but hey, you you could give him some sort. Of he's he's other. like the mafia ish guy, yeah. right? With the, he could do you know like how he owns the police or whatever Daredevil, so he could do like switch out with Magia police and the, uh, maybe a generic keyword is too powerful, but like Magia police and Sinister Syndicate, like well, that would be gnarly. Yeah, I think that'd be. I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of really good comic book options. Um if you're trying to be like thematic about it and not so much trying to like break the game. But yeah, I think uh, those are all kind of fun. And then we have Mark goes on to say to feed off of Alex, bottom three mechanics, top three mechanics. So I'm going to say number one for one of my bottom mechanics are swap teams. I'm sorry, Josh. I hate it. I really do. I hate it as a mechanic. Um, Sorry. Quaker steak and lube. What? I don't trust the mechanics there. Holy! I hate you so much. <laughs> I I can't believe I was that slow to get it. Uh, uh, probably because I've never been to Quaker State and Lube. Like, like what no, an it's Omaha Quaker thing steak. to steak. Steak like the food because oh. it's a restaurant where you can also get your oil changed. It's the strangest thing. I mean, that is the perfect night Aaron run you can ever do. <laughs> Grab your girl or your, your boyfriend, whoever. Hey, like, hey, hey, babe. We're got gonna a coupon go. for a $35 oil change with filter. If I buy a steak. How about I, how about I treat you some, to some fries and a nice chicken fried steak extra gravy? Hey, we also get a steak, and like your car is sitting in the parking lot anyways. Might I as mean, well get yeah. an oil change. It's such like a weirdly like crossover from like the fifties or something. Like I don't know. But yeah, it strangely still works. I actually like I yeah. I know actual human beings that frequent the restaurant and like a uh, garage for like either I reason. Hope actual human beings names rhyme with <laughs> bin and or spruce no. at, at either end no because uh, uh, that would be hilarious <laughs> it would go there i want to go there that's officially uh calder nest bucket list next time i've got to do an oil change i will drive 100 miles to nebraska while i need an oil change and then get my oil changed there you go yeah and there's nothing wrong with that right there's no <laughs> no problems that could happen <laughs> doing that uh, uh but mechanics uh man Remind so me of a mechanic, Jones number barbecue. one mechanic I oh think could be dead is relics, and I would really yeah. like a golden age errata that would just say all relic rolls are now like six out of six. Power action, you still technically have to roll the die, but right. no matter what the result is, you can equip the item. Because going forward, yeah. all equipments are power actions. Like Thor's hammer, the thing that would be like the most judgmentally like hard thing hey. to for a random person to pick up. And it did have like have some qualifiers. Oh wait, no, yeah, no, it didn't. Exospecs um, had a Exospecs had, had the qualifier. Yeah. yeah. So it's easier to wield Thor's hammer than a pair of goggles from space. Uh, but yeah, I think. Until changed, or if like never changed, the relic roll system is just silly. It's kind of fun, but in light of like the new items and stuff, it's really hard to pick like a relic to like play because if it's like a fifty-fifty chance that you don't get it and you just roll real bad, it feels lame. Another mechanic I didn't like. This will be my second choice here. Uh, alter ego. Part of me wanted to like it at the beginning, but it was like it was so borderline difficult to alter ego because you had to like so many successful attacks, get enough tokens, right. and then it was still you had to successfully roll it to then change. Like I'm putting in work as Tony Stark. I don't need to go to Iron Man. Like 
Right. Why why all this work for that? And I think Secret Identity is a better way. They have done Alter Ego, and I like Secret Identity. So I am glad that Alter Ego is dead, because that yeah. was a mechanic I did not care for. To go along with that, I'll throw in, even though it's different and technically better, um, I'll throw in the Battlefield promotion. Uh, so... Battlefield promotion was you get like promotion tokens for hitting characters and then you had to roll a d6. I don't even remember if it was a power action or not, but you got a, like a plus one to your d6 roll and you could potentially swap for what WizKids decided was a slightly better version. Uh, sometimes it actually was, sometimes it wasn't, but it was usually like on like the bottom dial you would swap into like this other character and um, and the mighty Thor actually had with Jane Foster and Eric Masterson actually had like a similar kind of thing, uh, except it was just when they were KO'd or when like a friendly oh, yeah. character was KO'd or something along those lines. And that was infinitely better because you didn't have to do it, but it was an option that was like easy to get to. And battlefield promotion was not easy to get to because, well, especially nowadays, if you're playing these like 10th anniversary figures Hulk starts with a five speed stealth, eight attack, 15 defense and one damage. And mind you, he can't push to click two anymore. So you'd have to play him with like blind owl or something like you'd have to play him with something to get him to click two, where he at least has a 10 for three. Um, but no, like the battlefield promotion was, probably like one of my least favorite things to try and do i tried it a few times and i was just i don't know not upset with it but i just it wasn't fun it wasn't a fun mechanic to me yeah no battle for promotion i didn't mean alter ego excuse me alter ego is that is here identity ish but battle for promotion is what i meant sorry um for my last mechanic i don't like i was never a fan of special terrain I'm going to play, and by that, I don't mean the WWE ring. I like the WWE ring, and I like the boxing ring. I never liked the cars. Okay. And just the cars and car. the uh, invisible jet. The invisible jet, the Merc jet, like that stuff. Like, those ones are just kind of lame. Like Really? It's just wow. Yeah, because okay. I think if it's going to be special terrain, I think it being clear was also, like, pretty important because it was really abusable with the Wonder Woman jet especially. Like, just kind of lame like they're they really are they're just kind of lame you know like i don't want to why do i want to play a junk car on my team you know thematically like oh i'm not playing wonder woman's jet i'm playing her junked jet on my wonder woman team like the the rings always made sense if you're going to play them with wwe or you're going to play them with like you know superman and muhammad ali but like crashed car i i never cared for that i never cared for that at all. hey we brought this uh broken down jalopy to this fight hope you guys don't mind everyone on like the opposing teams holding their ears and they're like ah my attack is minus one because that see car the, is so loud see the horn is stuck huh and they're like yeah. yeah i took her into the shop but uh you know take her like, to fight I, beach instead i think that special terrain could be done better um but yeah when you put it like that i yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of like the cars. I did play the Dune buggy a few times. I wasn't a huge fan of the cars, but yeah, I definitely enjoyed the battle or the boxing rings. Um, and if they did like slightly different versions that were, I like the size of the boxing rings as well. If they did slightly for different sure. versions and less of just like reusing a sculpt for optional like tr terrain, depends on like how they would do it. I don't know, it's not a mechanic, I guess, but the whole sketch variant thing. Oh, sure. Was like, that's not one of my favorites. That's not technically a mechanic. So instead of that, I will go with uh, set specific traits. So the I'm with Cap, I'm with Iron Man kind of traits oh, okay. from Civil War, where you would get like bonuses to like certain stuff and. I don't I, that just seemed seemed really lame to me that I would pull specific characters and it'd be like, oh well you're anti registration. So if you want to do with like the I w I'm with cap kind of thing, then you're gonna have to like, you know, do this instead. Care for the Civil War storyline, is what I'm saying. 
Um, I mean, that's fair. Like, it wasn't a great set. Uh, there, either Civil War set was pretty bad. Not not having any chases was like a huge bummer, in my opinion. Um, and then he asked for our top three mechanics. Uh, first mechanic I like, just to say it again, I love the duo mechanic, baby, split, merge. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Loved it. Obviously, it needs a little bit of tweaking, but I love that mechanic. Yeah, Same here. Um, I really like duo as well. Uh, my top mechanics would be like resources more i like objects i like relics um although i prefer objects over relics because that's just like the state of the game now uh, but i would like to see as many as we had back in the day where it was like every set that came out came out with at minimum it had like one kind of like relic that would be like an le object or something I'd like to get back to that. So like, even if the set doesn't have a specific amount of like relics or uh, equipments or whatever, it'd be cool if every set had a thing that like it did. Um, one little like 10 point, five point piece that like, you could add to any team. So even if you didn't care about the set, you'd get like this one little thing extra. Right on. Oh, gosh, what else besides like duo attack that I really, really like? Um, kind of miss horde tokens, although they were never uh, point costed uh, a, like a good like way to like work. Yeah, but, I mean, some bystanders would actually like make a lot of sense if I could like horde token them up, and when my opponent attacked, I just like remove one, and I still have you know the pile of rats or whatever. You no, know, I like um, the title character mechanics. I love that. So title character stuff, I think that's super fun. Honestly, really enjoy playing those games. Uh, any mechanics that mess with objects, uh, either bring in more from outside the game, either let a friendly character start a game equipped with them. Uh, the objects are fun, so yeah, I think those would be my last two mechanics that I, I really enjoy. It's like I, or messing with objects like the collector, or like Captain America from Earth X, uh, the LE that messes with objects, um, stuff like that. I think is really cool. Yeah. I think sometimes when they do the anti-object stuff, like Space Leo or uh, sure. there's a few characters that make it harder to equip, I don't think they go as far as they could. It's like, if I'm investing a 90-point figure and my opponent's only investing 5 to 10 points for their object, my 90-point figure should be able to just, like, nix that object. Like, 75-point uh, Doom, where... The time platform can just be like swapped or destroyed or whatever for their object. That should just be an optional thing if you're doing those kind of uh, traits going forward. Definitely, like I mean, I think Mister Nobody does it best, where you just get to place your opponent's objects, so you just yeah. get to steal them and then you get to use them like that for 55 points is awesome. Uh, of course, Nick Fury does it as well, but he's 98 points from the Winter Soldier set. Yeah, I think he has to be on a theme team. Uh, all right, and then our last question on Discord is Luke, Luke, what are you gonna do with all that junk? All that junk in your old clicks trunk? How do you know when it's time to sell, toss, trade, pack away, or shotgun your oldest figures? Shotgun, of course, uh, shooting them, not drinking uh, our old hero clicks figures. It's something I do on our YouTube channel. You can check out. You can watch me destroy some hero click stuff if you go to. Uh, I think the Fantastic Four unboxing video for. The Cosmic Clash starter. Yeah, I, I have a little yeah. little fun with that. Um, yeah. All right. So, hey guys, I just want you to know. I would just looked at our YouTube channel. We lost two subscribers today. I'm gonna need y'all to go over wow. to YouTube and subscribe. Yeah, yeah that's do. that's that's whack for real. That's what I thought. It takes more work to unsubscribe than it does to just subscribe in the first place. Yeah. So that, you know, that actually kind of hurts. Like, what, it's a little what did deep. we do in the last couple of weeks where someone yeah. was like? Really did not been... like that uh, Krypton yeah. game footage. Guess so. Um, anyways, uh, I do with my old hero clicks. Normally, I let it pile up for a really long time. And what makes me want to either sell figures or even clean them up in the first place is I just like started looking at stuff and like saw how hard it was for me to find other figures. And I'm like, okay, I got to get rid of some of this stuff. I normally, you know, pile it all up. And then I might start seeing like what some of it's worth if I'm throwing away like old chases or super rares or whatever. And then I might be like, oh, do a little cool stuff, Inc. Sell order, buy list here. 
So then I go and try to sell more stuff. And so I might be like, you know what? I haven't used Power Woman once or whatever. I'm like, all right, she's going for 30 bucks. Pff, all right, I'll sell her. You know, like, is also the tipping point for when I'm doing a little bit of clicks cleaning. So, yeah, I, I basically, I notice it whenever I start seeing, like, I'm, like, actively playing every week and stuff. And I start to see just, like, figures I haven't played in a long time. Be like, ugh, why do I even own that figure? You know? And then I'm like, okay. It's time to start doing whatever I'm going to do with it. Right. Um, that's about, like, how I feel. Uh, I So, usually, what I used to say is whenever rotation's about six months away, sell anything that you don't want to keep, you're not going to use in Golden Age or whatever. Um, now, with Silver Age, uh, like, being a thing, I don't know how much of that still rings true. I don't know how much... You know, going forward, everything that rotates from now on will be in Silver Age, probably you know until the end of Wiz Kids and HeroClix, because I don't see like them rotating Silver Age up or anything. Um, that being said, yeah, like I I used to say that, so I used to say sell before rotation, and then yeah, just don't worry about it. But now with Silver, I think it's okay to hold on to stuff a little bit longer especially if it's stuff that you can see working with like you know great generic keywords moving forward uh just like really good values like dark phoenix for example i'll probably keep one of those because i think going forward that figure will always be viable in silver in some way or another um and then trading trading is always like done when the figure's worth the most if the figure dips a lot in trade value, I usually stop caring about whether I can trade it or not, unless somebody's specifically looking for that figure, or you know, I might have it on like trade threads. There's several really old figures that I have that are still worth like twenty to thirty bucks that I will put on trade threads because I don't feel like selling them. And then packing away is just that's just the majority of my collection. So. Yeah. True. Uh, yeah. Uh, toss. I will lump into like giveaway because yeah. If if uh, common uncommon rare rotates, it's like at that point it should have been given away already. Um, but if I have any extra common uncommon rares beyond what I expected to use, they're usually you know toss or giveaway from like the point where I put everything from that set away. Oh, sure. Yeah. It's really rough when you finally, like, get rid of, like, commons and uncommons because it's, like, I had to give it away. But then it might be Golden Age or Silver or whatever at the time. People don't want that, uh, apparently. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. So then I got to sell do it. with an ABPI Medusa? It's not even Clearly, viable anymore. No use ever. Yeah. Um, and that is going to be... All of our listener questions. Like we say, guys, if you want to ask us questions like this, you don't have to be a part of the Patreon, but when we do like late minute, you know, shows like this, it certainly helps to be on the Patreon because that's who we go to to get like this content for you guys. And then obviously you can send us questions through Twitter or Facebook. There is no general legend here who's typically week this week because we were up, uh, you know, uploading early. So your tip is when you go out and you play in real life, think about this. If your venue is one of those lucky ones that is playing in real life, not only is it good to do whatever to protect yourself and others while you're at the venue, but also wear deodorant. That's it. Just wear deodorant. That's your hero clicks tip of the week. Um, y'all are gross. It's wear deodorant. <laughs> you don't, this is life tip. Life tip. Hey, going out, leaving your house anywhere in the morning, just pitch, deodorant. It's like five bucks. Less than that, even. Crazy. Wild. Some some deodorant, you're so lucky. You might even have aluminum in there. Isn't that dope? Um, it's got aluminum in it. <laughs> Oh, uh, gosh. Hey, subscribe to the Dial H for Hero Clicks YouTube channel and leave us a review if you enjoy listening to this podcast. Like, legit, guys. The reviews really do help us out a lot. Also, even better than leaving a review for Simeon and I, even better. Whenever someone asks, uh, what's a good Hero Clicks podcast to listen to on Facebook or on anything, if you recommend us, a lot of respect. Love you guys for doing that because I, I hate being one of those people and I'll do it sometimes too if no one said it yet because I do genuinely think we do make a good show and I do genuinely think we have a good new player episode. But uh, seeing other listeners like 
comment and be like, yo, the Dialogue Trio Host podcast is a good podcast uh, to listen to. And I think it's a great mix between casual, competitive, or it's good for new players, or it's whatever. That genuinely warms my heart. As much as I love getting reviews on like iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, or whatever, seeing someone else like plug us and make us not have to do a shameless here's a link to our thing. Yes, please listen. Please, please. Like, please, sir, can I have some more? Like, having to not have to do that is, is, I love it. So for everyone that ever has recommended it to a real life, you know, player in their play group, a real life friend, a person online, whatever, uh, thank you guys so much. It re- I really do. I love it. Yeah. All I wanted to say is, uh, Charles, you know who you are. I knew you were going to say Charles, too. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> That's I, I, yeah, I don't Charles have anything to alone. add to it. Just, uh, He's done nothing wrong except having seen Between you and Sean, comes... Charles, I don't know oh. which way's up and which way's down anymore. The two of you are on my list, though. Have been for quite some time. I thought they were uh, your teammates. I they thought were, they were your at one friends point, until they betrayed me. Oh. After I wouldn't, after I wouldn't team up with them, and then they betrayed me by beating my new team. Oh, that's right. They did beat. Oh, I forgot about that. I forgot um, about that. I'll never forget about that. Probably because uh, I won my game. Yes. What was no it? wait? Yeah. Did I? Maybe I didn't win my game because I know Devin... I lost against Sean. That's all I remember. I don't think I played against Charles though. All right, I, I have no idea. I have no idea how these course of events went down. And if you have no idea of how a course of events went down, you should probably see a doctor. But if you need some hero clicks, you need some more hero clicks and board games and uh, fantastic stuff in your life, you should check out CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find the coolest stuff in stock every day, including the latest hero clicks, singles, and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, oh, six six people, people think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, back some more. Let's just have to because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow.